Hello, today I'm gonna to be showing off the latest prototype of my drum carter. Like all my tools, I like to make it really compact and easy to move around. Uh, I haven't weighed it, but it's probably somewhere around six, seven, eight pounds, maybe something like that. Uh, it's very stable on the table, as I'll show you when I'm running it later. Uh, but right now I just sort of wanna show you the setup steps. So lots of the Parts make use of magnets, like the front tray there. Uh, I also have this cover on the side, which is held on my magnets to cover the pulleys, and that just prevents fiber from getting caught into the pulleys when you're running it. Uh, I'll just run it with the uh, pulley cover off, just so people can better see sort of how the different parts work. Uh, one of the things that I've been working on since the previous version is improving this tension pulley and I'm pretty happy with how it's working now. Uh, you definitely get a lot of power out of it and uh, I don't see the belts slipping much so I'm pretty happy with that but I still think there's a little bit more we can do to improve there. Right now I have the brush in the back. This is something I'm going to be testing out a lot. Uh, more in the future, but you can just sort of slide it backwards and forwards, and then you tighten it with uh, this screw here. I'm probably gonna change that to a, a dial in the future update, but right now you just use a screwdriver to tighten that screw, and it'll hold it in place. And I found that this actually works a lot better than uh, some of the other drum carters I've used, which have the flexible arm because you can really kind of push it in there and it helps compress the fiber. Again, that's something I'll show you a little bit when I get to demonstrating this. I've moved around controls a lot. One of the things that I really like is this side tray. So this is here to catch all of the debris. So instead of it falling into your table, the debris will fall into this tray. You can empty that out in the trash and just put the tray in place. Again, magnets are holding that in place and that seems to work really well. Right here is the speed control. And then in the back, I've updated it to be uh, pretty similar to the fold. So there's a power button back here and a display. So if I turn on the power, uh, you can see it gets displayed very similar to how the fold works. And then this dial, right now, the number being displayed is the uh, RPMs of the motor uh, before it is geared down. So uh, that's not the correct RPMs of the drum. I'm trying to figure out if I just want to display it as a percentage between 100 and 0% or if I want to... Uh, display it as the actual RPMs in the drum. But the drum RPMs are only about 40 RPMs, so the number would never go higher than 40 if I calibrated it to this drum. Uh, so anyway, that's just something I'm thinking about. As with anything here, if you have any feedback, I'm still actively making lots and lots of changes, so please let me know if you've got any feedback here. I'll just turn it on to maximum speed right now and let you sort of see it before I put any fiber on there. One other thing is I plan to ship it with a manual uh, crank so people can choose if they want to use the motors or a manual crank and all you do to put on the hand crank is you tighten this dial and then you would want to come over to this side and then you just want to remove the timing belt which is actually kind of hard to do with one hand but if I go like that then it'll come off and that's really all you need to do and then at this point it'll function like your typical drum carter where you've got a hand crank And this front liquor drum, it does have uh, slots here. You can't really see it, but you just loosen up these four screws. Or here, I can show you. I mean, it's very easy. You just, just like this, you just, whoops. Uh, again, one hand. <laughs> but all you have to do is just loosen these up a little bit. Uh, 
Um, when you're aligning it, you probably would want to remove um, this belt here. And then you just get it to the position you want. I mean, it, it goes way far away, so it won't even get close to touching, or you can have it collide in like that. So you're going to pick some kind of in-between um, region like that. And once you find a spot that you're pretty happy with, which that looks pretty good, you would then just tighten these four screws just like this. And you've realigned that front. Oops. At this point, you've realigned that front drum.